So I was on Twitter the other day and I saw some tweet about 13 reasons why an abortion. I follow a lot of pro-choice people on Twitter and I have my different lists on TweetDeck. Right. I think it was a uh, pro-choice clinic escort. Is the, is, these are your happy lists on, <laughs> on Twitter, right? I don't have any happy lists on Twitter. I don't like actually, <laughs> I follow very few people that I actually <laughs> like on Twitter. Um, I have like a close circle, for, like it's like a friend group plus like people that are famous that I actually like. Right. So uh, if you're in that close circle, you know you made it. Um, anyway, so I see this thing from 13 Reasons Why, um, and I'm familiar with the show. I read the book when I was a teen, actually, and they just came it's up. It's a book? Yeah. I, I thought it was just a show. Mm-hmm. Like I watched, the, we, I watched the first season. I watched one and a half seasons. Okay. Um, I just thought it was just like a brand new thing. I didn't know it was a yeah. book. Yeah, so the, the book only goes as far as like the first season. Okay. And they took a lot of liberties as well. So, okay. But I read the book when I was like young. I okay. would say 13 maybe. Okay. So um, anyway, so they came out with the third season over this weekend. And I was disturbed by the episode about abortion. So I, I like went right to that. It's the second episode. Right. And 24 minutes in is the first scene we're going to talk about. And then 32 minutes in is the right. second scene. Um, pretty much this is a flagrant misrepresentation of pro-life people. Yep. Um, unsurprising. Yeah. And so you've seen it. What, what was your reaction seeing those scenes? Um, it was frustrating and it was hard because, and I already knew what it was going to be. So like yeah. the shocker, Mm-hmm. I felt more of that shock when you were telling us. So, so what happened? Like, so like just to pull the curtain back, we were going to be recording this morning podcasts, and then during staff meeting this morning, Rachel says, "So I need to let you guys know about something." <laughs> mm-hmm. And so we're on Zoom. This is kind of like Skype. It's like a multi. You know, you can see everyone, and t- you know, Rachel's telling us what happens in these scenes, and I'm not surprised for quite a while. But then you get to the big turn mm-hmm. the big surprise moment and andrew and my I, our jaws literally <laughs> dropped yeah and we couldn't close our mouths for like sentences later we're just like just stunned mm-hmm. by what they did and so like I, I i'm used to hollywood mischaracterizing christians that happens all the time um but this is like a level of they, they've so over dramatized what happened so by the time i got to watching it I already, I, I have been yeah. spoiled. I, I already knew what was going on, and it just made me mad at yeah. how effectively they mischar, how how extremely they mischar, how extremely they mischaracterize us. I mean, okay, so I'm watching this last night at 10:30 right. before I go to bed, and like I had a long weekend. I'm like relaxing, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to check this thing out, which I have a no abortion after 10 p.m. rule, which right. I broke. Right. I'm watching this at 10:30. Say, what are you doing at 20 p.m. watching this? <laughs> Okay, so of course, like I'm working on the Sabbath counseling masterclass right. uh, these past few months, and just like working past few years, <laughs> past few years, all we've done. And we're putting this out September 13th, so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna check in on this. Yeah, it ruined my night. So let's just cut to what it what it is. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to like the the big scene that we need to address, okay. and then um, people can read the public statement. They can watch it for themselves if right. they want. We put a public statement out this morning, yeah. um, like 10 minutes ago. So this character seeking an abortion. She first goes to a PRC. Um, I'm not going to go into details about that because essentially she thinks the PRC is an abortion clinic. Right. Then she eventually ends up at the abortion facility. She schedules the appointment. She shows up for the abortion. And there's a group of like Christian anti-abortion protester types right. out in front. And I was like, okay, like I'm kind of used to like this sort of thing in film. Right. They're yelling about babies mm-hmm. are killed here and pray is very, a lot of Jesus and kind of religious right. language and their Jesus sign, loves your baby. Come babies pray are us. killed here or something mm-hmm. like that is, is on the sign. Exactly. Well, then a clinic escort comes up and she's wearing like a vest. It's, a, it's an orange vest says clinic escort. Yep. And she's like, oh, come with me. Like, we can walk past the crazies. And if you've done sidewalk counseling, you've seen this before. Mm-hmm. I mean, volunteer pro-choice clinic escorts who are helping the the, the abortion facility, may, try, trying to kind of diffuse the effectiveness of sidewalk counseling. Super common thing. They almost right. always have reflective orange vests that say clinic escorts. Like, there is a certain look usually to this. Yeah. That's how C is. She's, like, totally yeah. different from, like, we've got, like, these old... Christians, like mm-hmm. super religious people, and then kind of young, hip, She's clinic nice. escort runs She's like, out. I'm here for you. Yeah. I'm going to help you out. Yeah. And I think the, the girl said something like, are they always here, the pregnant the pregnant woman? Yeah. And um, she's like, oh, yeah. Sometimes they bring like 10, 15 of their friends with them. Right. And, it, you know, I'm like not really enraged yet, but I'm like, okay, like this is very typical of what right. I would expect to be portrayed. Right. 
Well, then the friend of the girl, it's not her boyfriend, it's like oh. another friend, like bringing her to the clinic. Um, he says something like, well, today's hard enough. And what does she say? <laughs> and at this point, she stops and says, it should be hard. Killing is a sin. And like, and she kind of stops and is like, what? And it turns out she's not a clinic escort. She's another one of the anti-abortion people. She's mm-hmm. one of the protesters, but she's in disguise. Yeah. She's got a clever clinic escort disguise on. And the thing is, she's been like escorting her, touching her back and like mm-hmm. holding her arm. Mm-hmm. And then she like turns and is facing this girl and she's yeah. holding her and she's like pleading with her not to have the abortion. Right. She puts a fetal model yeah, she in says, her take palm. this. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, bloody. Yeah. It's, it's, like, covered in fake blood, little fetal model thing. Yeah. And it was, like, super awkward. And, like, the way the cinematography is and everything, like, I was, like, really uncomfortable. Yeah. It's all close-ups. Mm-hmm. You're you're meant, at, for, from, yeah. from a cinematography level, just saying, like, you are meant to feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It's very, and which she would. Like, if this actually happened, of course, he's going to feel super uncomfortable. And they are portraying that effectively, let's say, with you know camera techniques and things like that and the worst part for me was like obviously i know what sabbath counseling really is right and i know what we're teaching people and right. in this master class we are so intentional mm-hmm. about this is not what to do right we talk about in no way should you ever be trying to deceive the abortion-minded woman especially with the vests so right. we're going to be selling safety protective vests because oftentimes our counselors are very close to traffic yep. they're like in the right of way legal area but that is often by times the sidewalk or very close to the road right and so with traffic coming in depending on the location you might need to be wearing a vest like this this, this is a safety thing so we're not saying yeah. don't ever even wear a vest yeah. we're saying it's good to wear a vest for safety reasons reflective vest but we're really clear about a couple of things about that vest yeah like in the in the workbook we have like a do's and don'ts and in the do's we have choose a color that's different than clinic escorts yep. or different than the clinic that you're working for like if they in front of if they have colors choose a different color right if they're wearing orange don't wear orange right if they're wearing yellow don't wear yellow right and so we're gonna have like multiple colors to choose from and our say pregnancy resource advocate right. on them because we want to be very clear we're not with the clinic right we're here to offer alternatives we're here to offer other resources right. free stuff that you're not going to find here right. so it's not effective first off to be deceptive but even if it was effective it's wrong to do so we are strongly discouraging that this is a thing that we have never heard of like people actually like putting a like a bloody fetal model in someone's hand like this is not what you see this is a caricature a misrepresentation and hollywood is not good at nuancing things they didn't even try here (laughs) no kidding (laughs) Yeah, I, and it's so frustrating. Like I, I'm, I, and I'm frustrated, and, and I'm, I'm, a, you know, equal offender here. Like I, I am, I am equally frustrated when either side does this. So Christians yeah. do this too. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this is why I have a hard time watching Christian movies. And I, and I'm, and I've now offended easily at least a third of our followers <laughs> because I feel like whenever I say anything about Christian movies, people are like, like, be ready to jump in and defend. <laughs> no, God's Not Dead is like a really great movie. You don't understand right. me. And then we get into a debate about. About what is a good film yeah. and what is not a good film it's not my view that it's a good film and and and, and just take out cheesy writing take out bad acting take out all those things that are sometimes maybe kind of common in christian movies unfortunately mm-hmm. like they're the caricature thing so god's not dead totally caricatures atheists and that's not good it's not good for atheists watching for yeah. them to see us treat them this way. It's also they're going to not... be frustrated. They're right. not going to enjoy the movie. They're not going to get anything out of it because they're... they're so distracted by, that's not what I'm like. Right. Yeah. They're having the experience mm-hmm. that we're having watching Sabbath counselors portray yeah. this way. So that's frustrating. They're going to be less likely to talk to, I think, Christians in general after that. It's also not good for Christians to see atheists portrayed in a straw man-y caricature way mm-hmm. for all kinds of reasons it's not it's just not yeah. good for us but that also is true on the other side it is not good um or right for hollywood to portray christians as, as if like we're all going to westboro baptist church yes. or we all you know like like uh, all we care about is just trying to get people into heaven as quickly as possible and we're going to act all crazy and all weird like that's not helpful either it's a total caricature so if if hollywood shouldn't do it christians shouldn't do it 
And if Christians shouldn't do it, then Hollywood <laughs> shouldn't do it too. Just miss, I hate straw men. Yeah, it goes both ways. And I just think that this is so harmful to everything that's happening right now. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's it's this goes beyond just painting like a one-sided narrative. This really, it made me so, it's going to make you angry if you watch it. Yeah. But um, I think you should. And I think you should know how to talk about it with your pro-choice friends. So let's right. talk about this. Like if I'm a pro-life student, or, you know, a pro-life advocate right. in general, and, and my friends are watching this show, and they're like, oh, my gosh, like, that's that's horrible. How how should we respond to that? Let's talk about that for a minute, get a little bit practical here. Yeah. Um, because uh, I really want I really, I really really want people to have a conversation about this. You shouldn't just be, like, silently sitting there. If your friend doesn't say anything and you're pro-life and you're watching the show, you should be speaking up and being like, that is not at all yeah. what's happening on the sidewalk. Yeah, so, like, so, like, so, so you and I did a whole memes yeah. webinar I don't, I don't want to say recently or it's like months ago now, but um, but we did a webinar about about this. And one of the things that I said toward the beginning, this is kind of a little bit of a shift for, for me, but just to kind of recap um, where I have been generally there's, you know, don't spend all of your pro-life time on social media debating people. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a little bit more of a place for that right now just because there's so much misinformation. You know, mm -hmm. after, you know, Kavanaugh ended up on the Supreme Court. Um, and, and after, you know, Georgia and Alabama and some of these other states did these heartbeat type bill things mm -hmm. where they're trying to get um, the Supreme Court to relook at Roe versus Wade. Um, you had you, know, you saw the memes from the pro-choice side, including mm -hmm. very, very deceptive memes, just like kind of it just kind of exploded. Like there was just yeah. like more. And so Definitely. we were kind of saying, like, look, at the very least, pro-life people ought to be active um, dealing with misrepresentations and deceptive memes and things like that and then we gave just a whole bunch of examples for that we've got a really good post we'll link to it in, in, the, in the, the the description where we even give you like here's like some kind of like ways you could respond to mm -hmm. a lot of these common meme categories so i feel similarly here um if you hear someone bring this up um, this would be a good th this is like a very easy opportunity as the pro-life person to jump in and say hey just so you know we're not like that. Like, I mean, th th there's extremes in every group, okay? Yeah. There's a friends element of pro-choice groups that we could spend all of our time talking about, and it wouldn't do that much, but th th that much good because it's just a very extreme element. There's also friends elements of pro-life people. Fine. That happens. I wish it did it. None of us, mm -hmm. none of us like the friends element of the group. That's that's embarrassing and cringy. Like, th this is like, that's yeah. how life is. But so it's like, like, that's not how the pro-life movement, like the mainstream pro-life movement is. Yeah. Um, this is why there are large groups trying to train both pregnancy resource centers on how to be accurate, not deceptive, you know, not giving medically inaccurate facts, things like that. There's also cyber counseling groups like us that are trying to train cyber counselors. Here's how to do it right. Even if you kind of accidentally ended up in some bad habits, here's the right way to do things. Here's why this is the right way to do things and mm. a more effective way to, to do things as well. And so just kind of stepping into saying, hey, I'm actually familiar with that. It was at that point, like, I just, like, that's a good thing. Yeah. That's common ground. That's showing that you are not like completely divorced from the role. Like what's 13 reasons why? Like I've never <laughs> heard of what's Netflix. Yeah. Like you don't want to be that guy. Like right. it's, even if you haven't watched all the show and there's reasons not to watch the show, it, it, there's, there's big problems, even the first couple of seasons. Um, but just at least have like knowing what the show is mm -hmm. and having seen these couple of scenes and being able to say like, look, um, I watch those scenes. That's not how the pro-life movement does. I want you to know, like the pro-life movement, the mainstream pro-life groups, they're not about deceptive practices. They don't act like that. No one is putting bloody fetal models into people's hands, at least no one that we've heard right. of. And, yeah. and just, just saying that. Mm -hmm. I mean, and also, like, I want to ask people if the reality of Sawa counseling was like that, then mm -hmm. why are, am I, am I hearing stories about people Thanking sidewalk counselors, yeah. you know, why Why are we having these sort of results? Because if sidewalk counseling was all protesting and it was shaming women and it was shouting horrible things at them, we wouldn't be getting texts saying, you know, my child just turned four. Right. Thank you so much because right. he wouldn't be here if you hadn't met me that day. Right. Like. You don't get that sort of experience. When I worked at the pregnancy medical center that I yeah. worked at in college. Let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. Because if we were a fake abortion clinic, we wouldn't have women leaving saying, I felt cared for here. Thank you so much. Like they would write us like little thank you notes in the comment sections Aww. of like the outtake form. And I never saw our clients like 
leave or their appointment early like because they're like, they were like freaking out. out. Like they'd right? all be or storming like, out, right? Yeah, exactly. I would think so. Or leaving in tears or writing us bad reviews online or something. Right. You know, and we just didn't get that. And also, like, I'm the receptionist. I'm like scheduling the appointment. And in the show, she doesn't know it's a, a, a pregnancy care center until like. She's Towards already had of, an ultrasound. It's like the end of her appointment. And she's yeah. like way into a counseling appointment mm-hmm. thing before she even figures it out. Like yeah. they, they wouldn't have let you do that. That couldn't right. have happened at right. your center, right? right? Like I was trained and we had it on our website. Like we do not refer or perform abortions here. And I would be very upfront with people about that. Right. And yeah, she and she gets like cut off in the middle of the – like she's trying to ask the person – do you guys not perform abortions here? And she doesn't even like like listen or let her respond right. or anything. And I'm just like, in what world is this? Ha-? You know, and that sort of if that was happening, pro life people would discourage that. Right. We don't want people choosing to carry their baby to term because we tricked them into it, right. pressured them into it. Like that is not how we operate. Right. That is not what we want. And we want to give them more information. We want to give them more resources. We want them to think through and talk through the decision. Right. And it's just, it's so upsetting. So it's I, so I, funny I, to see. I, so, this, I think this is such a good point you're making. And, and yeah. I want to uh, like highlight something about you. Like, we're not saying this never, ever happens. Mm-hmm. But you're saying if this was mainly what was happening, if right. this was like common practice, both PRCs and sidewalk counseling would not be so effective. You wouldn't have Abby Johnson saying, okay, when this many people were, were outside of our clinic— Here's, you know, the percentage of abortions that were going mm-hmm. down or, or, or other people who like former clinic people who have said that, like yeah. that wouldn't have been happening if they were all acting like this, that like those people would not that they're that, that group on 13 Reasons Why literally effectively chases the girl into the clinic, which is common. Yeah. That's common. It's a, it's a thing that that does happen, even with less extreme, mm-hmm. but maybe not very effective set of counseling techniques is it's, it's like you ought to be thinking. What effect am I going to have on the person by what I put on this sign or what mm-hmm. am I saying out loud or whatever? Like, are you making yourself more approachable? Are you are you making it more likely she's going to come to you? Or are you making it more likely that she's going to walk faster into the clinic? You should be asking yourself that question mm-hmm. when you think about the different things you ought to be doing. And so, like, I remember a long time ago I interviewed Christy Burkhart, mm-hmm. who's the director of the Fresno Pregnancy Care Center. We She's on the sidewalk counseling master class. This is awesome because yeah. we're encouraging sidewalk counselors to have to build a good relationship with their local PRC. That doesn't always happen, but we want that to happen. Um, but but even before um, we started URI, I had interviewed her previously on my, on my previous podcast, Life Report. And I just, like— Showed her, like, all these, like, you know, NARA will do these investigations mm-hmm. sometimes of PRCs, like Lila Rose style. They'll go in, like, with an undercover, you know, like a hidden camera and stuff like that. And they'll go in and try to expose these fake clinics. So I was like, so let's talk through all these things in this in this report that they're complaining about. Now, a lot of the things in the report were just, like, th- they just disagree about the things. So, like, these PRCs are saying that there's a link between abortion and breast cancer. And it's like, well, yeah, well, we actually think there is. And there we have mm-hmm. some evidence for that. So, like, that's fake clinics they're lying it's like oh no we disagree about facts here right yeah but then there would be other things to be about like you know deceptive practices or pretending that they're a clinic and christy would just be very clear oh yeah we don't train our people to do that we, no one should be doing that and what's going on is you've got this kind of you know the mainstream prcs um that are usually under things like Carinet or heartbeat um or human coalition mm-hmm. who are trying to help them to be very careful about this stuff but then every once in a while, there's these other clinics, these centers that aren't even on our radar because like a big church, for example, mm-hmm. will buy the build, like the house next to them and set like, we're going to do this cool pro-life thing and we're going to set up this this PRC. Like that's the thing that happens mm-hmm. sometimes. And then sometimes those, like they, they're under the church. They're like mm-hmm. a ministry of the church. Yeah. They're not ne- as often. It's not like, like sometimes they do, but sometimes then they're not as likely to get connected with like Karenet, for example. Mm-hmm. And so then they might end up in some of these kind of bad practices. So, like, I'm, we're not saying it never happens, yeah. but if that was mainly what was happening, none of this stuff would be effective. We wouldn't have so many babies being saved and Planned Parenthood wouldn't be so miffed about tribal counselors that we try to have clinic escorts out all the time. Like, they don't, you don't need a clinic escort if they're, if everyone's being so deceptive that the girl's running into the clinic for safety. <laughs> and, okay, the thing is, like, I think sometimes people think the pro-life movement is way more organized than it is. <laughs> I was afraid to say that when you were drinking and you are going to spit it out. Um, but, as a pro-life person, like, you don't need to defend every little thing that anyone who's anti-abortion is yeah. doing. All you need to say to your pro-choice friend is, 
yeah, I totally disagree with that. I would never encourage people to do that thing. Yeah. And just hearing that from you is going to make a world of difference. Yeah. And also like them realizing, okay, the United States is a big country. Right. Anyone who's against abortion could go out in front of any abortion clinic and say whatever they want. So yeah. can we definitively say that no one would ever say X? No, no. we can't say that. Yeah. But can we say there is not organized agenda that's secretive and we're all like meeting and like drinking espresso and like right. we're like talking about like we're going to do this thing. That's not happening. Like, trust um, me. I go yeah. sometimes to <laughs> these meetings that happen. And, and there are, so there are meetings where pro-life leaders will get together. Yeah, for sure. And it's not a big public thing. And mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be like tweeting and taking selfies at it because it's, a, it's meant to be kind of a safe place for us to talk strategy. I don't go to all of these things, but I go to them sometimes and, and, and kind of connect with people and, and, and stuff. And trust me, this is not what's being talked about. Right. <laughs> exactly. like a, a lot of the things, I'm not going to get into what we talk, but it's like, it's, it wouldn't be that surprising to people. Like, mm -hmm. it's, like it's, it's organizations trying to make to have better open communication with each other, less maybe work together more often. Like, mm -hmm. like that's kind of a push that's going on. And, and I think a lot of times that could be a really good thing. It's, there is there is not, it's not a conspiracy. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> conspiracy theory people, usually the conspiracy is not there, it's way I more guess. boring than you would think. It's not yeah. an entertaining conspiracy theory. Yeah. But I just want to encourage pro -life people, yeah, you should say something. And it yeah. can be, you don't have to have all the statistics yeah. and all the things lined up. You really don't. For something like this, yeah. sometimes it's enough for your pro-choice friend to hear, yeah, I am taking the summer counseling course. It doesn't say to do anything like this. Yeah. It says the opposite. I, you know, have friends that do summer counseling and here's what they're like. There are nothing like this. Sometimes it's the personal experience yeah. that's going to actually make a huge difference. Yeah, I went to the Pregnancy Resource Center fundraiser last year, and they always like say that they don't refer or perform abortions. They give only medically accurate information. Right. They have nurses on staff that are doing things that our nurses should do. Like talking about those things right. can really, really help this. And that's really related to one of the practical dialogue tips that mm -hmm. we talk about. Um, in fact, it's not in the Equip for Life course yet. I want I, It would be great if we could add it at some point or, or maybe we'll make a YouTube video about it sometime. But, the, but there's a really good blog post that my brother Tim wrote a while back um, that I've, I've added this to a lot of my practical dialogue tip live talks because I think it's so good, mm -hmm. which is this idea of affirming their feelings. So we'll, we'll, we'll link to the article. But the basic idea is if you're talking to someone who has actually had a personal experience with a really negative anti-abortion person, feel free to throw that person under the bus, okay? Yeah. You don't have to defend the friends element of the movement. Just like, you know, if, if someone's like, man, you know, I, I had this horrible experience with this pro-lifer because they they said that we can't be friends anymore because I voted for Hillary. It's like, okay, I, I, I want to say, like, just feel free to say, I'm really sorry that happened to you. I, I, I don't think people should have been defriending each other over how they voted. Uh, I, I, I think that you were mistreated there. I, I'm really sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I'm still friends with people who voted for Clinton. I'm vote, I'm friends with people who voted for Trump. I'm friends with people who didn't vote for anybody. <laughs> you know, like last time, like it was a really hard election. Um, but like just just mm -hmm. like like I, I would feel similarly upset as you if someone treated me like that and just just do that and build a connection with them they might not connect to the rest of the pro-life movement because of how that person acted but you can still build a connection with them by just being honest about how you feel about that thing mm -hmm. i think that's fine it's, it's less obvious how we should talk about this stuff in public sometimes but if you're some one-on-one -on -one with a friend of yours and they're like I just had this crazy experience with a pro-lifer. Yeah. Just feel free. Like, like, don't throw them under the bus if you agree with that. Don't be, mm -hmm. you know, don't be like sneaky. But like, if you actually disagree with what this pro-life person supposedly did, yeah, just say that. That's okay. Yeah. So this discussion's gone on a little bit longer than I thought it would. It did. That usually happens. But I want to say like. We're seeing abortion pop up in more and more pop culture yep. and more and more TV shows yep. and celebrities are talking about it a lot. Yep. So I think that a lot of this applies to more than the 13 reasons why thing. Yep. But this thing in particular is so bad. I think you should go watch just that like 10 minutes of the show. Yep. Um, the like scenes we're talking about don't have really explicit content. Like it's upsetting because it's abortion and right. whatever. But some of the show has explicit stuff. This particular part does not um i think it would be appropriate for like teenage even teenage uh pro-life students to watch so yeah. um check with your parents but like 24 minutes in and 32 minutes in, you should watch both those scenes and keep an eye out for the sidewalk counseling master class if you want to learn how to do sidewalk counseling well and effectively it's yeah it's available for pre-order right now and coming out september 13th i can't wait